Hi, I'm Carl from the Woodshop TV, and today I'm going to demonstrate Craig from Chefwork Kit's new sphere and threading jig. It's a combo jig. So you take a couple of pieces off of the sphere jig and it turns into a threader. It makes spheres from 10 inches down to half an inch, and simply by changing the position of the cutter on the sphere jig. So it has two positions there and you can rotate it around to do larger spheres or smaller spheres. So there's two pieces that you pull off to turn it into the threader. A couple things to note here real quick. This uh, sphere jig, if you have the older model of the thread, the Easy Threading Jig Pro, it uh, you can put the sphere jig on this. So you can do that, and this can be bought separately. You can either buy the threader or the sphere jig and then add the other pieces later if you would like. The threading jig, it allows you to do a lot softer wood than doing hand chasing too, which is really nice. I have a piece of walnut that I that I just got done threading on it. So we'll take a look at that. If you're a Toolmasters member too, I will put a link down below in the description. There'll be a discount on this jig too, so go check that out. So. It's, it lines up, when you line it up for the spear jig or the threading jig, both of these positions here have a little point on them. So that is how you line it up. You just line it up with your tailstock or your headstock with the spur center or live center right on point, and then put a little collar on it to lock that down so you get that position right. And as far as doing spheres, so you just basically rough turn a sphere and the spear jig gets it perfect. So it won't, if you take a giant block of wood, it's not going to make a sphere out of it. You have to rough turn it, the basic shape, and then the sphere jig takes over from there. But it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Help support the companies that support our community. I have a piece of maple in between centers here. It's roughly about seven and a half. So what I did to speed up the whole process was just rough turn it. So what you want to do is just get the basic shape and then you can go ahead and put the jig in. So you put the jig in your banjo, in your banjo line it up on your spindle center. It has a little, little uh, hole there for you. It's easy to line up. And they put the little collar around the tool post and that way you know it won't move on you. So as far as turning the sphere, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You just, I go down about half a turn on the wheel each time after you make a pass and you just rock it back and forth and it brings it down pretty fast. This one, after I was done with it, I went ahead and just rough sanded it and then took it over on the bandsaw and cut the little nubs off before I brought it back to the lathe. I used the vacuum chuck. You don't have to, you can make, make little cups for the spindle and the tail stock and you could do it that way. But I have the vacuum chuck and it makes it go a lot faster. So I just kind of kept moving around in the vacuum chuck as I was sanding it after I cleaned up those little little nubs on it. So it's pretty straightforward and I'm pretty excited. I want to do a do a 10 inch sphere. I haven't done one that big yet, but it should be fun. As far as the setting up the um, threading part of it, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through that. This is my first time, so let's uh, see how that goes. All right, to switch it over to the sphere jig, we are going to walk through this together because I haven't. It's the first time I've done it, so we'll figure it out. This one on the other side, I wrote a wrote a two on it, so you take this off and the, off and that, and then the cutter bar here. So it just all comes apart. Not uh, sure. It's first time, so probably get a little faster once I know how to do it a little better. But probably should maybe take ten minutes or so at the most. Loosen all these up. So Craig is making all these right at his shop there. And so when you put the this piece on for the spear uh, cutter, it's you put that screw in it. And if you want to move it down here to the other position to make smaller spears, you can do that too. Get this one off. Let me take the tool post out. We need to put that back in. We need to put it back in in a different position though. So that comes out. Like I said, once you know how to, how to do it, it's gonna go, go pretty fast. But First time always takes the longest. 
Alright, so that pops out of there. And I believe that this one probably stays in there because that is how you uh, adjust it. So it goes in the tool post right there. So this is the, the threader for it. And this slides through just like so it's right in there like that this side comes over here and then we have a a uh, handle that goes on on the end of this right here loosen those up in there <clears throat> so and then you want to reset these these set screws once you have it in there but you want to make sure you get it tight but so this still turns in there reset there's they're down in that that little groove now This is the handle that goes on the back side of it. It has a little uh, spot machined on it right there. So, thread that in. Just like, oh, loosened it up. So, thread that on just like that. Then that's how you'll adjust the, as you, you turn the threads in, just like that. And it, this is going that way. <clears throat> so the cutter head, this one goes right into the headstock. You use a draw bar. It's threaded for a draw bar. So you put that in there to uh, suck it down tight and it's, uh, well, pull it down in there and lock that the cutter head in. All right, um, <clears throat> let me go over and make sure that the, um, that everything is right on this and I have it all set up right, right before I go ahead and stick it on the lathe and start trying to cut threads with it before I want to make sure it's locked in there but it's pretty simple so that was my first time and it's still I don't know maybe took 10 minutes at the most so and there's how you thread it together this is how you adjust this whole thing is moving this bar back and forth so this was sliding this way and your threads are going in that way so this is determines how you get it close to your box so you have your piece here it in the chuck and the cutter heads on the lathe so this will move back and forth that way all right let me just make sure that i have everything right I went ahead and readjusted the height. I used the point in the spur center to line it up right in there, and that lines it up on center, and then I locked down the little ring here. So what you want to do is line it up with your banjo. So I have my piece of turned here. I'll do the inside and the outside threads on it real quick. So you thread, just pull your whole chuck off. Lock that down. So here's the cutter. Go ahead and put that right in your headstock there. Use a draw bar. You want that in there tight. So it comes with a little collar and it, it tightens down as you tighten up the draw bar. Slide that through there. Thread it in a ways. Don't go in too far to where it hits the, the cutter, but just about half an inch or so from it. All right, so what you want to do is get your cutter head up there. You want to line this up on your banjo as close as you can to straight. I use a little speed square down here on the, on the lathe bed to help line it up a little bit. So getting back this off. 
So what you want to do is have it, the cutter head just touch the wood and then this is how you adjust the depth of the cut. So get it in there to where it's just barely rubbing. The lathe speed on this, you want this at 2500 RPMs. So let's go ahead and back it off just a little bit more. We'll crank this in just a little bit. I'll bring the the camera right up close when I start cutting. But So I have it all lined up now. It's going to cut a, a, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth or so. Lock that down. And then this is what's going to run the threads in. So let me move the camera and I'll come right up close on this. Don't go too fast. Try and keep it moving, but you don't need to go too fast on it. Some woods are, are better to uh, thread with. This is walnut. It seems to thread pretty good. These aren't, aren't very deep. Probably go in a little bit further. Let's turn the lathe off. Back this up just a hair. Play it back up. This one will definitely give you a better idea. It's quite a bit, quite a bit deeper. Always stop before the cutter head hits, hits the bottom there. Let it come to a full stop before you loosen that nut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go on a softer wood like this. It seems to work pretty well. I would uh, definitely recommend if you go much softer than walnut to use uh, a thin CA glue to kind of stiffen them up a little bit. But you can sand them a little bit and then use the that CA glue. It, it works very well. All right, and then let's move over here and do the inside. So I'll move the camera again, same thing. You just line it up until it's just touching the wood. Get your banjo squared up here. 
lock it down so it's hitting I'm gonna back it up like that back it away from it a little bit so inside and outside threads let me hit that with I'm gonna put the chuck back on here just sand it up just a little bit hit it with some 400 grit and I'll show you a close-up of that I'm just using pretty pretty rough grit just clean that up because I wasn't planning on making a box or anything out of it but I might just clean out the inside of it and then make a lid for it that uh, that I thread but I'm gonna be using it in, in some videos coming up too so you'll be able to see how well well it threads on and that thing you need to remember this is 400 um, is that when you do so your outside thread diameter needs to be really close to the inside diameter of the threads there so just keep that in mind when you're when you're measuring everything don't measure that diameter and make the inside of the lid that diameter because it'll just slide over it so it needs the inside of your lid diameter needs to be the inside of those threads not the outside So I'm just have the sandpaper folded over just like that and I just started on the on the threads there and just let it let it do its thing and then just threaded it right to the end. But you can see that's walnut and it's not a, a really hard wood but it's nice and clean. There we go. And I will, I'll be doing some more projects where I use both the threading jig and the sphere jig coming up so you can get a little little better look at it. But as far as taking it apart and turning it into the sphere jig or the uh, uh, threading jig, it, it was, I don't know, may, maybe 10 minutes. And that was, that was my first time. But as far as the quality goes on it, it's a big improvement from, from the original one. It just, it probably weighs a twice as much and the machining on it seems very very nice um, there's no slop in it at all the other one sometimes if you didn't have everything tightened right up it was it was a little bit loose but um, quality on it is fantastic I'll put a link down below to Craig's website it's chef work kits um, you probably already know but and he'll have all the specs on it over there like I said just some moving around the parts to to increase the sphere size and if you want to do different size threads it's just a matter of changing the the bar, rod right there so it's pretty pretty simple and straightforward and uh, when I do do a um, um, a threading one I'll grab a piece of wood that's really good for for threading because the walnut's a little bit soft but it, it worked out nice and uh, just remember if you, if you have a threading jig like this remember to use a draw bar because you don't want that bit coming out of there. If this is your first time here, I have a new project video every Friday. I hope to see you there and if you would please hit the subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you next week. Bye.